Détective Hercule Poirot Ah, Chief Commissioner. On the contrary, it is a most convenient time. The safe passage of a painting. Tell me everything. If man was meant to travel the oceans in such conditions, he would surely have been given his own fins. A distraction is what one needs. Where is that blasted contact? How is one to prepare for an assignment if one does not have all of the required information? Very well. I shall wait no longer. Beautiful, isn't she? Pardon, monsieur? The open water. There really is nothing quite like her. When one suffers from the mal de mer, the beauty, as you say, is rather more a burden. Forgive me, I just can't imagine being scared of the ocean in this day and age. The potential to see the world is open to even the ordinary man like us. I can assure you, monsieur, it is not a matter of being scared. And as for ordinary... I didn't mean to offend, mister. I am... Forgive me, madame. No harm done. Accidents happen. I... My cigarette case. Where is it? I didn't see. You thought I wouldn't notice? A young lady traveling alone. An easy target for you, I bet. I'm sure the young lady would appreciate the help of two handsome strangers. Ah. A young lady should not be left to gather her own things. Oh dear, what a mess. I didn't drop it on purpose. A young lady should not be left to gather. Ah. 
You are returning home? I am. But how did you know that? Besides your educated accent, the crest that adorns your cigarette case, it is of British origin. Very observant. It's the crest of my family, and the case belonged to my mother. I take it everywhere with me. Miss Florence Farquhar, a pleasure to make your acquaintance. The pleasure is ours. That looks like everything. Except for my powder case. Is this what you're looking for? It is. Thank you, Miss... Miss Babanin. Anastasia Babanin. Anastasia? What a beautiful name. It was my grandmother's. Well, that's everything now. I can't thank you all enough for your help. I'd be happy to escort you. Here, I'll take your back. Oh, yes. Okay, thank you. Cabin four. I'll be right behind you. Anastasia, perhaps I can offer you a token of my gratitude in the bar later? That would be lovely. And you, Mr... Detective Hercule Poirot, at your service. A detective? I was not expecting to meet such a distinguished gentleman on board. I did not expect to meet someone of Russian descent on a ship between the great city of Antwerp and Dover. I never mentioned where I was from either. One did not have to. Anastasia, of Russian origin meaning resurrection. And here was me thinking I was special. Your knowledge of my heritage is most impressive. And I'll take that as my cue to leave. Good evening. It seems it's just us remaining. I would very much like to hear stories from your homeland. Perhaps you would join me in the restaurant. As charming as that would be, I'm feeling rather tired. It must be all the sea air. Then I shall leave you to your slumber. Adieu. As much as I enjoyed the delights of the restaurant, I still found my mind drifting back to Mademoiselle Babania. 
She really was quite charming. I have spent the first part of this excursion neglecting my duties. It's time to retrieve my notebook from this safe and begin. The combination was not a difficult one to remember. 1815, the Battle of Waterloo. Huh. Come now, little grey cells. The battle of... Et voila. Time to... One cannot ignore such a blood-curdling scream. My mother's cigarette case! It's gone! How could somebody do this? Mademoiselle! I ask that you take a moment to calm. You're a detective, of course. What luck. As luck would have it, one of Belgium's finest. Now, I require as many details of the crime as you can offer. I came to my cabin and began unpacking. I couldn't get the safe working, but the gentleman that helped me with my luggage showed me how it works. Afterwards, I went for a brief walk, and when I returned, the safe was open. And my cigarette case was gone. We must consider the suspect list. Those who were aware of the cigarette case's existence. That can only be those who were up on the deck when my luggage spilled. Miss Babanyan, the porter, yourself. And your helpful stranger. Yes, of course. I ask that you gather them for me. And while you are absent, I shall begin my investigation in here. If Mademoiselle permits. Whatever you need to do to find it. Huh. Ah. Mademoiselle, I thought you would be returning with the gentleman also. The gentleman wanted to speak to the porter alone first. I was unaware he is also a detective. He's not a policeman. He works in insurance, I believe. It appears I shall be spending my time chasing amateur detectives around the ship. Mademoiselle, I would like to start with who had access to the safe combination. No one. It was in a sealed envelope that was waiting for me when I arrived. I memorized it and threw the paper overboard. Four, three, eight, five. It's really not that difficult to remember. A similar envelope was waiting for me upon my arrival. The date of the Battle of Waterloo, as I recall. Every safe, although identical, must have a different combination. After the gentleman helped me with the safe, he left. 
If the mysterious gentleman is behind the theft, he went to great lengths to hide his fingerprints, but did little to hide his movements in Mademoiselle Farquhar's cabin. There are many questions that require answers, answers I believe he may hold. Hot on the culprit's heels. Mademoiselle Babagnan, I'm sorry we must continue our conversation under these circumstances. On the contrary, what fantastic luck that you are here. Now I get to see you at work. I'm afraid I've done very little, actually. After we parted ways, I went to my cabin. I had barely unpacked and I was fast asleep on the bed. Alone? That is a rather personal question, don't you think, detective? I'm sorry, I'm a little nervous. A poor attempt at a joke. Yes, I was alone. There is no need to be nervous. And then? And then I was woken up by Florence's scream. I have never heard something so terrifying. You have been most helpful, mademoiselle. I shall not take up any more of your time. Hmm. Ah. Magnifique. A fingerprint. Now to determine who it belongs to. You found one, detective? Oh, how exciting! I suppose you'll want to take mine. To rule me out, I mean. You could ask me anything. Am I to be used as your guinea pig? 
I would not dare compare you to a guinea pig. Would you be so kind? The answer is yes, of course. I have nothing to hide. I must act on thought and fact, not on impulse. Another success. I never doubted myself. I'm sorry, but it's just not acceptable, Mark. I've apologized to the lady. And that makes everything all right? It was an accident. An accident that could have been avoided if you hadn't spent your morning drinking. Gentlemen, you are behaving like two young boys in the schoolyard. It ends now. Is Mademoiselle Farquhar aware you are acting as her knight in shining armor? I wouldn't go as far as that. I think perhaps we have got off on the wrong foot. I'm Arthur Hastings. Would... She requested you to follow her to her cabin, no? Oh, yes, she did, but I wanted to... speak with the porter privately? This was part of your investigation? Well, I'm not a detective. I was just, uh... Then perhaps you will answer some questions that are vital to my investigation as a detective. What can I do for you? It is. Is my employment relevant to Miss Farquhar's missing cigarette case? I hope you will entertain me for a moment. What would you say the chances of proving a theft in a case such as this one are? Well, a report from a detective like yourself will certainly help expedite her insurance claim. As I thought. It had perhaps not crossed her mind before, but being amongst an officer of the law and an insurance man, the idea of insurance fraud may have appeared appealing. When Florence, Miss Farquhar, 
told me that something had gone missing from her safe, I thought it must have been the porter. How so? I'd rather not say with him standing just there. It is not I that controls the volume of your voice. You must have noticed the smell of beer on his breath. I wouldn't put it past a man that drinks on the job to steal. That is quite the accusation. And if you were correct, you wish to settle the matter with him privately? I wanted to give him what for, but uh, I suppose I lost my nerve. I'm what some would call a middleman. I oversee the handling of recently sold items and put the buyer in contact with an appropriate insurer. The mention of insurance initially sparked my attention. But the more he talks of his work, I believe he may be my mysterious contact from Lloyd's of London. It was your work that took you to Belgium? I can't go into too many details, but... I'm actually delivering a rather special piece of art to London. I'm meant to be meeting an official of some sorts that's supposed to be helping me, but no sign of them yet. And it is confirmed. It concerns me that my supposed trusted colleague has found himself involved in the middle of my investigation. I will continue to withhold my true identity and see how Monsieur Hastings' involvement concludes. Merci, monsieur. This really is an exciting case. Anything I can do to help Miss Farquhar, please don't hesitate to ask. Your enthusiasm has been noted. Perhaps you and I can have a more civilized discussion. I'll tell you the same as I told your friend. I will not be bullied. Intimidation is not my forte. What is, is uncovering the identity of criminals and making sure they are punished to the fullest extent of the law. And that's me? That is what I am yet to conclude. Who said anything about drinking alcohol? It does not take a detective to identify the distinct odor on one's breath. Maybe one to calm my nerves. My sea legs aren't here yet, that's all. I was in the cargo hold, cutting something with my knife, and it slipped. No harm done. I'm not quite sure you understand what that means. So now I am a stupid and a drunk? Do you have the knife in question on your person now? I don't. He stole it and won't return it. What can I do for you? Huh. I shall let you return to your duties. Mademoiselle Farquhar, I shall have your cigarette case returned to you before we reach the English coast. I hope so, detective. Insured? Oh no, why would I have it insured? 
anything of substantial monetary value. I'll stop you there, detective. The cigarette case itself is hardly worth two pennies, but to me, it's priceless. Not for a second, at least not with my permission. You probably think this silly, naive woman has left her valuables out, or I've just misplaced them. But I assure you, that is not me. It had not crossed my mind for even a moment. You caught me, reading my own article. I must say you raise a very interesting point. Art should have no social boundaries. Creativity is for all to enjoy. Thank you for saying that. I wish everyone was as open-minded. Yes, I'm really quite excited about it. You have been invited to a preview at the Royal Edward Gallery. A small world indeed. Will you be in attendance? It's actually one of the reasons that I have been in Belgium. I was lucky enough to have a sneak peek at some of the pieces on show. I'll also be writing a follow-up article on the success of it. Fingers crossed! Lucky indeed. I am sure it will be a great success. Of course. Whatever you need. Merci, mademoiselle. That is all for now. You could ask me anything. You have been most helpful, mademoiselle. I shall not take up any more of your time. Magnifique! A fingerprint. Now to determine who it belongs to. You found one, detective? Oh, how exciting! I suppose you'll want to take mine. To rule me out, I mean. Aha. You could ask me anything. You have been most helpful, ma- Oui, monsieur. I shall let you return to your duties. What a revelation.
The pieces of the puzzle are finally coming together. I must consider the suspects I have in front of me. Monsieur Hastings. He is keen to impress Mademoiselle Farquhar and claims that he was alone in his cabin working since. Marc Allard, the porter. Evidence suggests a rather amateur attempt to break into the safe, which in his intoxicated state would make sense. But it was just a ruse. The safe was opened quite masterfully, leaving only signs of a poorly attempted break-in. Mademoiselle Babagna, a new friend to Mademoiselle Farquhar, who appeared at a most convenient time. I cannot see a motive besides the obvious value of the cigarette case, but Mademoiselle Farquhar has made it quite clear the value is of a sentimental nature. Perhaps the best thing for me would be to return to my cabin to think. I fear my legs and perhaps even my evening meal will not last much longer amidst these waves, perhaps. Ah, detective. How goes the investigation? A good detective. Better yet, a great detective will find motive, means, and opportunity. She found it! Miss Babanyan found it! Oh, thank heavens! I was on my way to speak with the captain when I saw something shining underneath one of those pipes. Strange that it was not spotted earlier by any one of us while on the ship's deck. Maybe the thief was scared and dumped it for fear of being caught red-handed. Miss Babanyan, Anastasia, you saved the day. I can't thank you enough. And you, of course, Detective. I find Mademoiselle Babanyan's explanation of finding the cigarette case rather coincidental. But without any definitive proof, I cannot suggest anything otherwise. The cigarette case has been returned and the coast is in sight, which is what is important. Although, there still remains a part of me that craves the truth. I suppose you can chalk that up as a victory. A victory for Mademoiselle Farquhar, but not in the eyes of the law. Well, if anyone asks, I'll confirm what a splendid job you did. Very kind, monsieur. While we are on the matter of truth, Monsieur Arthur Hastings, you are here to oversee the transportation of the penitent Magdalene painting, are you not? How on earth? You are aware of my employment, but not of my true identity. Detective Hercule Poirot. Wait, are you the official that I was supposed to have met on board? Oui, Monsieur. Please, accept my apologies for keeping my true identity hidden. But I had to be sure your involvement with the theft was purely coincidental. When it comes to the nature of our work, trust must be earned. A little unorthodox, but I suppose I understand. So you can trust me now? It continues to grow. Well, we have a couple of weeks before the gala, so hopefully by then you'll trust me with your life. One can hope.
I don't think I'll ever stop being amazed seeing such incredible pieces up close. One would certainly hope not. Huh. gentlemen think of this particular piece can it really be to a layman perhaps I'm afraid it's a complete fake no such eloquent and delicate work very observant but that doesn't make it authentic you know even Michelangelo himself was an art forger in his early career see if you can spot the telltale sign of a forgery The crack allure is inconsistent across the painting. Surely a sign of a cheap imitation. Very impressive, detective. Unconvincing aging is one of the most common giveaways of a forgery, whether it be in the crack allure, the smells of chemicals used to artificially age the painting, pigments that haven't dulled with age. Sometimes it's as simple as the materials used, just not existing at the time of painting. The trustees were quite excited by its arrival, but it didn't take me long to identify its faults. Quite the detective yourself, Mademoiselle Warbeck. Please, call me Evelyn. If there's one thing I've learned in the short time I've spent with the detective here, formalities and politeness are essential. They are a cornerstone of modern civilization and must be upheld. This city could benefit from more gentlemen like yourself. Now that the etiquette of our greetings has been decided, shall we finalize preparations? I was hoping you'd say that. The exhibition area needs to be secured. I wonder if you would be able to lock the remaining doors for me? I'll lock the west wing door when I'm finished there. And if you could tie this ribbon around the handles of the main door for me, I'll leave it outside. If securing the exhibition room is what Mademoiselle Warbeck requires, that is what shall be done. Detective Poirot, have you ever seen something so beautiful? Monsieur Hastings, everything has beauty. It is only how the individual perceives it that defines just how beautiful. Yes, I suppose you're right. Oui. I am. Mademoiselle Warbeck requested I prepare a ribbon over the main exhibition room door before the grand reveal. Once I have done that, the restoration room door shall be locked, and our work, for the moment at least, is complete.
Miss Warbeck did ask you to make it look pretty. One shall complete the task to the degree it is requested. Symmetry is the key, you see. Oh yes, I see. Everything is now ready for the arrival of the guests. I assume you have the list of guests? I am afraid not. It would usually be an essential part of my preparation. In fact, it perturbs me that there is something I did not have time to prepare for. Would you like me to find Miss Warbeck? There may still be some time to check the list. Look, there's Miss Farquhar. With Miss Babinin. Seems that they became fast friends after the incident on the ship. Intriguing. Intriguing how? Speculation, monsieur. Nothing more. That head of yours is just constantly full of thoughts. Who's this? I have no idea. But she's sure to turn heads with such a fetching dress. I quite agree. And who is this dapper-looking gentleman? Mon Dieu! Wait a minute. Is that... Well, I never! Poirot, you devil! Forgive me. Where are my manners? Detective Poirot. Goodness, Monsieur Demir. Poirot is more than adequate for an old friend. He saves my family from near ruin, uncovers a murderous plan, and still has the modesty to not correct a buffoon like me. Allow me to introduce myself. Heavens! My manners appear to have been replaced by surprise and excitement. Forgive me. Monsieur Demir, this is Monsieur Arthur Hastings. You've got yourself a partner now. Well, any friend of Poirot's is surely a friend of mine. Monsieur Hastings has been kind enough to show me the sights of London. A more than adequate guide. I would take that. It's as often as a blue moon you see Poirot handing out approvals like that. And what is it you do, Mr. Demir? A previous field medic, Monsieur Demir now finds himself working for... With... Pardon. With his brother, doing most honorable charitable work all across London. Need I say more? Could everyone gather together for a photograph, please? Would you all move a bit closer together for me, please? I didn't realize we were going to be in the newspaper. Is that a problem? No, not at all. I just want the camera to get my best side. Okay, if everyone is ready. So, Buaro. What on earth are you doing here, anyway? My orders were to see to the safe travel of the centerpiece of the exhibition, the Penitent Magdalene. Monsieur Hastings here travels with me, covering any administrations and insurance requirements. Art protection? That's a bit beneath the great Hercule Poirot, isn't it? Especially protecting it from this lot. Perhaps you would be so kind as to introduce us. Where's the fun in that? We have to make sure those... What's it you call them again? You are referring to my little grey... Little grey cells, yes? Ha, that's it. I've been playing a little game. I've been trying to find a painting to match each of the guests. At least the ones I'm acquainted with. I wonder, Poirot. Do you think you can ascertain which paintings match which guests? Ah, oh, I can give you a little info, but you'll need to make your own inquiries.
Miss Irene Kortsmeier. She is one you'll want to keep your eye on in the future art scene. Born and raised on a rather affluent estate, she turned her back on her parents in her teens to start a new life in London as an artist. She's a very nice young lady. Interested, are we? I was only making a comment on her nature, nothing untoward, I can assure you. Or as we are all meant to refer to him as, the Honorable Reverend Horace Mountjoy. He's a man of the church. I'm not sure what else there is to say. If you're wanting to keep the lectures to a minimum, I'd avoid admitting to anything that would even be considered a sin. Ah, Mortimer Aylesworth. If you've not heard of him, I'd get familiar with the name. Eton and Cambridge educated, he followed in his father's political footsteps and has already surpassed them. Johann Christiansen and his glamorous wife, Betty Allen. Betty Allen, the actress? The very same. They've been here in London for a few years, although she still plays down her boldness for British society, even with her recently taking a new role in the theater. She did not take his name in marriage? Allen is her maiden name, works as her stage name too. A lot snappier than Chris Jensen. And his employment? He's a partner for a private bank in London. He has told me what he actually does many times before. And many times, I forgot. You will no doubt already know our host, Evelyn Warbeck. We have already made her acquaintance. Very pleasant, if not rather flustered by today's exhibition. That's everyone. Well, there's Mr. Hastings here. I'm sure we shall get to know each other better. And our mystery woman. Anastasia Babana. We met briefly while traversing the channel. Look at you, Poirot. Got a love interest of your own, huh? Monsieur Demir, must I remind you of why I am here? No. No need at all. <laughs> I know your strictly business. Let's see what you can do then. And come back to me when you know enough about the guests to solve my little mystery. So, have you any thoughts on my little mystery? Everything seems to be running smoothly. You've done a sterling job. Everything except for the bishop and the other trustee stooges. It was never going to be easy going up against them. All men of a certain age, not used to the idea of change. But they didn't get their way this time. And with my exhibit coming up, this place will finally have a showing they can be proud of. And the quality the museum deserves. Mademoiselle Kortsmythe believes her upcoming exhibition will change the perspective of the trustees and the public. I get the feeling she enjoys the accolades and being the center of attention. Detective Poirot, you're looking much happier being on solid land. There was a moment when I thought that wretched sea would get the best of me. Well, I'm certainly glad it didn't. As am I. Please, do not allow me to disturb you, madame. Adieu. Ah. Incredible, isn't it? And to think we are all located on that one small planet. 
revolving around an all-encompassing star. <laughs> oh, to think of all the suffering. I give what I can to charity, but what this country needs is someone willing to put the poor first. I'm well aware of where we are. I just want to make sure I'm looking my best for the photographs. And people call me the drama queen. Hmm. Hmm. Beautiful, isn't it? Not like the modern tripe Miss Warbeck insists on bringing into the museum. Oh, the Lord will not look fondly upon her choices. I would hope one's choice of art would not affect one's chances for a better afterlife. Let's hope not for her sake. So, have you any thoughts on my little mystery? Might they be like this particular piece? That's right! Although I shouldn't be surprised. Anyone else? Might they be like this particular piece? That's right! Although I shouldn't be surprised. Anyone else? Might they be like this particular piece? That's right! Although I shouldn't be surprised. Anyone else? Ah. Huh.
Oh. Oh. It is a great pleasure to see you again, mademoiselle. I've been looking forward to us bumping into one another. Thank you again for your help. I must admit, I feel almost tormented that I was not able to uncover the identity of the thief. All that matters is that it was found. If you'll excuse me, I really should get on. This article isn't going to write itself. I moan, but it's my love. My obsession, you could say. How dare you! That might be something you say where you're from, but not here. Not to me. What a waste of champagne. I thought this was supposed to be a civilized event. Ah, you are right, mademoiselle. I, I hope you did not spill any champagne on your gown. Don't worry about me. It's only that wretched man that has got some cleaning up to do. His suit and his mouth, by the sounds of it. Do not allow this to ruin your day. I have no intention of allowing such a thing. In fact, we have business to discuss. It would be good to at least schedule a time that suits us both. Monsieur Christiansen and Madame Allen have returned. You are to be the focus of Mademoiselle Farquhar's article. Miss Court Smythe here is the next big name, and she has been kind enough to offer me an exclusive interview. Madame Allen has left via the exit, but Monsieur Christiansen has not gone with her. Do not allow me to interrupt your work. Ah, you've had more than enough time, detective. So, how did you get on? If one is to discover the truth, one must proceed using the correct methods and cannot be rushed. Anyone else? Might they be like this particular piece? That's right! Although I shouldn't be surprised. Anyone else? Might they be like this particular piece? That's right! Although I shouldn't be surprised. Anyone else? Might they be like this particular piece? That's right! Although I shouldn't be surprised. Anyone else? Might they be like this particular piece? That's right! Although I shouldn't be surprised. That's everyone. Well done. I should have known it'd be no challenge for you. I have faced many a more demanding challenge, but few quite so enjoyable. Hi! Is he okay? 
I think something's wrong with him. I think he's <sighs> having a heart attack. He seems stable. Now's the time to get him to the infirmary. Oh, there's no need for that. I'm feeling much better already. Wouldn't it be best to telephone for a real doctor? Monsieur Demir was a field medic. What more of a professional is required? A field medic? Really? I... Th a field medic that has seen people in a lot worse states, who didn't have the luxury of a proper hospital. Oh, I, I didn't mean to offend. I'm sorry. If I am being carted off, the unveiling must go on. I will not have this silly old man ruining the gala for everyone. You drive a hard bargain, Monsieur Aylesworth. I'd just like to say a few words. I'm sure you would. Thank you all for coming. Here at the Royal Edward Gallery. We are proud to present such wonderful works by some truly fantastic artists. And with much negotiation and pleading, we have been able to secure a most fabulous and individual piece. Standing here with you, unveiling today's centerpiece, the Penitent Magdalene, really is a special moment for both this museum and me personally. So, without further ado, Oh my. Am I missing something here? Things just got interesting. It was. It, it should be. Is this some kind of joke? Evelyn, what's going on here? I... I... Oh, trust you to have no idea. You've really done it this time, girl. She's done nothing. It's not her fault. By the grace of God, it's somebody's fault. I am quite sure Mademoiselle Warbeck is as surprised as us all. <gasps> Some... S'il vous plaît, everyone. Remain where you are. Please do not touch a thing. Monsieur Hastings, you saw me lock the door to the restoration room, oui? Of course. I was by your side. I'm going to be in a lot of trouble for this. You are not responsible for the painting's disappearance. But who is? Do not allow any of the guests to leave the main hall. And what are you going to do? What is required? One's job. So, um... I don't really know what to say. Monsieur Hastings, this theft may be a new and foreign concept to you. But to Detective Poirot, it is just another case waiting to be solved. What do we do, then? We must get to work. If we can ascertain the thief's point of entry and exit, this may all be resolved momentarily. Aha. Hmm. Ah. Huh. 
was staring me in the face. Logical thinking shall always prevail. Gentlemen, I have called the police and they should arrive shortly. What can I do in the meantime? Do you still hold the master key? Of course. You are the only other person who has had access to it. Très bien. Please keep it close. I believe the thief may be one of the guests here today. What can I do for you? Merci, monsieur. I should not be surprised by my own skills of deduction. Monsieur Hastings, I pose this question to you. If Mademoiselle Warbeck still has the master key, is she not a suspect herself? Très bien. Mademoiselle Walbeck is likely not our thief. The real thief did not care about the museum and what is hung on its walls. At some time during this evening's festivities, the key was taken from her pocket and used in the restoration room door without her knowledge. If we find the pickpocket, we will uncover our painting thief. First, we must search the restoration room.
Mesdames et Messieurs, your attention, please. I am Detective Hercule Poirot of the Belgian Police Force. I was charged with the safety of the penitent Magdalene painting on its voyage to London from Belgium. The missing painting has indeed cut the celebrations of the gala short, and so I consider my duty to be, as yet, incomplete. Still ongoing. With your cooperation, I ask that you all remain within the building, and I intend to speak with you all individually. If I was the thief, I would certainly be worried after a speech like that. I just wonder if... Maybe I should let you do the questioning. Monsieur Hastings, the painting's safe return also falls upon your shoulders. I know, but I can make myself useful elsewhere, see what clues I can find. Voilà. I should consider this fa Some would say a lucky guess. I would say a moment of genius. Magnifique. Bonsoir, Monsieur Christiansen. Detective, what a mess you have on your hands. That is certainly one way to describe it. Perhaps you can begin to help me to clear up this mess. I was with Betty most of the evening. She wasn't feeling herself. I'm glad I didn't leave and miss out on all of this. Don't tell me you don't get a little thrill when a new case appears. I do not think about such thrills, Monsieur Christensen. Only justice. All business, no pleasure, I see. I remember seeing the priest. The bishop? Yes, uh, him. He came down the stairs just before Mr. Aylesworth recovered. Maybe a man of the church was all he needed. Oh, you saw that. I believe every soul in the museum did, or at least held the commotion. So I look like the bad guy, hmm? That's what you get for standing up to a bully, I suppose. A bully? She made some pretty awful comments about Betty and her career. And I wasn't just going to stand by and let her say whatever she wanted. You should lock her up for what she did to me. She's unhinged. Are you married, Detective Poirot? I am not. Then heed my warning. If your wife, whenever she comes along, wants to be left alone, you leave her alone. Merci, monsieur. Bonsoir, mademoiselle. It seems trouble follows you, detective. So it would appear. And the faster I am able to ask my questions, the faster this trouble will be resolved. 
I saw Betty leave the main hall and head for the West Wing after the whole champagne debacle. What do you think that was all about? It is not my job to speculate on such private matters. It is to uncover the location of the missing painting and who is responsible. If there is someone who can, it's you, detective. Merci, mademoiselle. That is all for now. Mademoiselle, if you have a moment, I wish to ask you some questions. Look around you, detective. Out of the ordinary is the ordinary here. Regarding the guests of the gala, you had the opportunity to speak with them all? I met that delightful Farquhar girl, the art critic. With any luck, her article will finally give me the respect I deserve. Your talk on the balcony went well, I presume? Well, indeed. We weren't up there for long before the poor politician was struck down. What luck for there to be a doctor at the scene. And for us to have a detective here, too. Before I wasted a perfectly good glass of champagne on that man, you mean? That is certainly one way to tell the story. I'd hardly call him trying to push himself upon me as a story. With his wife in the same room? You think a man with that much arrogance cares? Women are nothing more than objects to him. One day he'll learn his lesson. Merci, mademoiselle. That is all for now. Bonsoir, Mademoiselle Babania. Please, Detective. Surely we are past those formalities. What you may consider a formality, I consider etiquette. Well, I had the pleasure of meeting the other guests. I feel so fortunate just to be invited myself. Modesty is the color of virtue. Now, Mademoiselle. You were saying? Oh, yes. We all gathered for that delightful photograph. Then I spent some time looking at all the wonderful art. I did notice the actress and the politician returned to the main hall together. And the other guests? I saw Bishop Mountjoy and the politician, oh, forgive me, I forget his name, leave towards the East Wing together. It was much earlier in the night, well, before that. You have been as enchanting as always. Madame Warbeck. A moment of your time, if you will. I was rather busy, as you saw. Especially with Irene and her disappearing act. Disappearing act? An artist and a magician. She is a woman of many talents. She was nowhere to be found. Is that better? She was supposed to help me organize everything. Then I saw her throwing her glass of champagne at Mrs. Allen's husband. I was hoping to speak with her after, but I didn't see her again until she was calling down from the balcony following Mr. Aylesworth's collapse. Mr. Christensen, Betty Allen's husband. After the theft, on my way to telephone the police, he was looking for something in the West Wing. Merci, mademoiselle. That is all for now. Bonsoir, Your Excellency. I should be addressed as Your Grace. Pardon. I did not mean to offend Your Grace. It's just that in Belgium... It is quite all right. None of us can choose where we're born. <laughs> now... What can I do for you? Uh, if I must, I was talking with Mr. Aylesworth for a time. 
Some strange opinions, that one. Would you care to elaborate? You were not present for that conversation, and I hardly think it appropriate to involve you now. Although, I will say he was rather keen to see the orrery from the balcony. He left, and I spoke briefly to that actress, but she wandered off looking for her husband. Uh, up the main stairs, I think it was. Who would have thought the reveal of the missing painting would cause a man to take such a turn? Perhaps a warning to us all that such a scare could come at any time. Are you trying to say that is what's going to happen to me? Your grace has misinterpreted my meaning. But on the matter of where you were at the time... Then maybe you should think before you speak. And I was talking with the young Russian girl. Merci, Your Grace. I thought I would make myself useful, and uh, I think I found some things of note. Bon, I shall go and retrieve them now. You are wise to not touch them and contaminate any evidence. Oh, uh... I didn't think about that. I did only move them to the West Wing. Fantastic. One step closer to revealing the truth. Logical thinking shall always prevail. I should consider this further. One step closer to revealing the truth. Come, my little grey cells. What can I do for you? Merci, monsieur. Aha.
Very well. Get on with it. Merci, Your Grace. If it'll help retrieve the painting. Of course. I have the key. Mademoiselle, the key? I'm sorry. You said it yourself. I think I should just hold on to it. I was not expecting Mademoiselle Warbeck's hesitation. Mademoiselle Warbeck, I really must insist on access to the restoration room. I find your reluctance to oblige a little uh, troubling, Mademoiselle. Now listen. I am the curator of this museum, and I... Miss Warbeck, will you let the man in? I, for one, would like to get to the bottom of this tonight. Please, Evelyn. Let's not drag this on all night. Evelyn Warbeck? That's me. Detective Inspector Hardwick. I was told a painting's been half-inched. Yes, it's... Stolen. Detective Hercule Poirot of the Belgian police. Seconded by the Musée Royaux des Beaux-Arts de Belgique and Lloyds of London to escort the penitent Magdalene here. How do you do, Detective Inspector Hardwick? Well, thank you for that introduction, Mr. Poirot, but we won't be needing your help this evening. But you see, not only do I have a considerable personal stake in this matter, I also possess undoubtedly the finest investigatory mind in all of Belgium. I'm sure Belgium thinks you're the bee's knees, but we'll be just fine and dandy. I must insist, Inspector. Bloody hell. I don't have time for this. Will someone try and get through to this man before he does my head in? Dear Mr. Poirot, I know you meant well, but perhaps now is not the time to push the Inspector's buttons. Très bien. Monsieur Hastings, the fate of the penitent Magdalene lies in our hands. And Miss Warbeck's career, by the sound of it. Then we shall waste no time. We have spoken with a number of the guests from the gala, but there still remains those who are absent. They may be able to offer a clue as to the thief's identity. Then let's go and find them. Poirot, over here. I heard about the painting. Trouble just seems to follow you. If there's anything I can do to help. I am looking for Madame Allen. Would you know where I could find her? If she's not on stage already or rehearsing, she'll be in her dressing room. That alleyway will take you to the back door. Ah. Oh, 
This isn't quite what I was expecting from a famous star like Betty Allen. A famous star that is not on stage, nor in her dressing room. You don't think something could have happened to her? Combining the state of the room and her being absent, I fear something sinister may indeed be afoot. Huh. What do you need? What can I do for you? The fact that there are valuable items remaining in the safe leads me to believe that the thief was looking for something specifically. Something that they knew would be present in the safe. Meaning they had previous knowledge of the contents of Madame Hélène's safe. In effect, they must know Madame Hélène herself. suggests hot on the culprit's heels.
What do you need? What can I do for you? Why, Mrs. Allen? Madame Allen was behind the mess that lies before us. Filled with rage, she... What do you think you're doing in here? Security! Uh, pardon, Madame Allen. I do not wish to cause any alarm. I am Detective Poirot. You will recall from the gala. Yeah, I remember you. Doesn't give you the right to be snooping in here. Snooping, no. Waiting patiently, oui. You can wait outside. I'll talk to you there. We'll go on then, shoot. Ah, uh, Madame Allen. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. Look, let's just get on with this, shall we? I promise not to take up too much of your valuable time. Well, thanks to Johan walking off, I got stuck talking, a term I use loosely, with Mr. Aylesworth and the all-important bishop, as he likes to consider himself. Where did your husband go? Beats me. But when I saw him next, he was being attacked by that crazy artist. You must have seen it. I did. And while I do not condone such behavior... If you are going to defend that woman's actions against my husband, I'll stop you there. Not really any of your business, is it? I would not forgive myself if something improper had happened and I had not addressed it. You've got nothing to worry about. I'm an emotional woman. Let's just leave it at that, shall we? I thought it was best to just get myself out of there. He may have bitten his tongue, but if I'd got my hands on her... Your husband mentioned you were feeling under the weather, no? Me? No. Ah. Je vois. May I also ask about the snuffbox that was found? I've heard the Brits like that stuff. Not for me, though. Sorry. You have been most helpful. What do you need? What can I do for you? Merci, monsieur. Oh. I told you last time you made a mess of things that if anything else was to happen, I... So, you... are... Blaming me for the painting going missing. I have poured my heart and my soul into... Pardon. Perhaps this is a conversation that should be had behind closed doors. This conversation will happen where and when I want it to. What Detective Poirot means is maybe somewhere a little less public would be a better place to have it. I am well aware of what your foreign friend was implying, and I shall give you exactly the same answer. Let us not say anything that one would later regret. A moment to breathe for everyone, perhaps. You do as much breathing as you want, as long as you find that painting. Mademoiselle, May I request a minute of your time? 
What can I do for you? Can you not see that we're busy? Your Grace, there are matters we really must discuss. You do understand my time is valuable, don't you? Merci, Your Grace. What do you need? What can I do for you? Merci, Monsieur. I don't think you quite understand the severity of the situation, Detective Inspector. I'm well aware, and I'll conduct my investigation how I see fit. That just isn't good enough. How would you feel if... Uh, who am I kidding? You could never afford something like that. I can assure you Detective Inspector Hardwick and his men will be doing all they can to find your missing painting. Now you have some officer from another country entirely fighting your battles for you? I speak on behalf of no one but myself, monsieur. And I didn't ask you. Hardwick, get it found. Right you are. If you want to deal with him, fine by me. Will you allow some officer a moment of your time? I'm a very busy man. And then I shall keep my question short. <laughs> I'd say the heart attack was the most memorable part of the day. Quite understandable. But before that? I was talking to the bishop, or rather being talked at. Uh, he doesn't see it, but he gets quite heated. Um, that's the last thing I remember. I did. That man just wants someone to listen to his incessant ramblings. I just couldn't stand there and listen to him anymore. I decided to walk away and see the orrery from above. Then I met that young lady. Betty Allen. You two spoke? Briefly, but she was looking for her husband, so I think uh, her mind was elsewhere. I will not take up any more of your time. If you want to deal with him, fine by me. Detective hmm. Inspector Hardwick has made it quite clear that my valuable insight is not wanted. Perhaps I should find an alternative means of entry. I hope you're getting something out of wasting my time. Heated? Who said that? They are the words of Monsieur Ellsworth. Oh, the man is in politics. He should know what heated looks like. Oh, maybe I was a little... forceful. There was no one else around. How was I to know he was having a heart attack when he clutched his chest? It could have been anything. And when I saw he was in trouble, I went to get help. I suppose I got lost finding my way back. I do not believe Bishop Mountjoy was the instigator of Monsieur Ellsworth's heart attack, but it appears he does. He is quite rigorously trying to convince himself he is not to blame. Merci, Your Grace.
What can I do for you? He knows just how to push. He knows what this museum means to me. That is clear to us all. He thinks he can say and do what he wants because of his position. But if he thinks he can get rid of me that easily... This museum is my life. And if anyone, including him, tries to do anything to jeopardize that, I won't be held responsible for my actions. I'm sorry. The Detective Inspector was quite adamant I wasn't to allow anyone in. Detective Hercule Poirot is not just any man, mademoiselle. And modest to boot. I suppose it can't hurt. Follow me. There you go. The key. It is in a far better condition than yesterday. It was looking grubby and covered in rust, so I cleaned it. Is that a problem? If you find anything else that may be of importance to the investigation, I ask that you leave it as you found it. Ah. Hmm. Oh. Aha. Oh. What do you need? What can I do for you? Merci, monsieur. Huh. Ah. Hmm. Aha.
The pieces of the puzzle are finally... The answer was staring me in the face. I should not be surprised by my own skills of deduction. When the thief entered this room from the West Wing, there was no paint on the key. We know this because there was no paint on the key when they used it on the door to the gallery. But there is paint on the key when the thief locks the West Wing door after stealing the painting, telling us the key got covered in paint in this room. We, oui. and only after the painting was stolen. So, what happened in between locking the door to the gallery and leaving this room to lock the west wing door? The picture is becoming clearer, and the paint is the key. The thief unlocked the door from the west wing into this room, unlocked the door to the gallery and stole the painting. They then returned, whereupon they lay the painting on the desk. The thief locked the door and returned to the painting. But then, an accident. They dropped the key into the palette of paint. How can you be so sure? We know because the paint palette was the only source of blue paint in the room that the key could have dropped in. But why put the painting on this table, where items may be knocked or where they may be heard? Perhaps the answer is before me on the desk. Huh. Uh -huh. What do you need? What can I do for you? What can I do for you? Merci, monsieur. Gentlemen, have you seen Miss Babanyan? She wanted to speak with me after the bishop was finished chewing my ear off. But it seems the pair of them have disappeared. I'm afraid not. Can't have been that important then. What can I do for you? Merci, mademoiselle. That is all for now. What do you need? What can I do for you? Merci, monsieur.
If you want to deal with him, fine by me. Ah, uh, I suppose I can spare a minute? I will not take up any more of your time. I hope you're getting something out of wasting my time. Merci, Your Grace. What do you need? What can... Merci. What can I do for you? Merci, Mademoiselle. Hello? Who's that? Bonjour, madame. You're not English. Where are you from? What are you doing here? Madame, I am Detective Hercule Poirot of the Kingdom of Belgium's police force. So what? I was hoping to speak with a neighbor of yours. Mademoiselle... She's not in? Are you waiting for her? Do you know how long she... You can give her this. I'd tell her I did what I could with it. I will be sure to do that. Adieu, madame. What can I do for you? Merci, mademoiselle. I hope you're getting something out of wasting my time. Merci. I suppose... I will not take... If you want to deal with him, fine by me. Gentlemen, have you seen Miss Babanian? She wanted to speak with me after the bishop was finished chewing my ear off. But it seems the pair of them have disappeared. I'm afraid not. Can't have been that important, then.
Aha. Huh. What can I do for you? Merci, mademoiselle. What do you need? What can... Merci. I hope you're getting s Merci. You're just full of questions, aren't you? Where did you get that? It was found in a vent at the museum. Perhaps the very last thing I expected to find. Yes. Well, thank you. I knew I had lost it somewhere. A clearly valuable ring has just been returned to Madame. And she acts as though it means nothing to her. And I would not describe throwing a ring at one's husband resulting in it being stuck in a vent as a case of losing it. It is clear Madame Allen felt no sickness at the gala, rather anger. In a moment of rage, she threw her ring at her husband before exiting the museum. And having seen the damage that she has caused in her own dressing room, one can conclude that it was the state of her marriage that allowed her emotions to get the better of her and act so rashly. You have been most helpful. The detective inspector will now be able to see as plain as day that Mademoiselle Kurt Smythe is the guilty party. Now to find him. With the other remaining guests' movements all accounted for, she was the only one capable of making haste with the painting. Ah, detective, you're here. Look and you shall find. How may I be of assistance? Oh, well, I've had the photographs from the Garda developed. That's good thinking, Miss Farquhar. Oui, very kind, mademoiselle. There is nothing left for us to do but to take our findings to Detective Inspector Hardwick. Do you think he'll listen? It is his duty as a high-ranking officer of the law. We shall not be ignored. We have done all but arrest Mademoiselle Court Smythe for him. If it is the accolade that he desires, he may have it. 
I was thinking that while you were speaking with Miss Court Smythe, I could try and find Mr. Christensen at their home. It would certainly be more efficient. An excellent idea. Uh, him, with a funny accent. He was here earlier asking the same questions. All I want is a bit of peace. I'm terribly sorry for the inconvenience. We... Monsieur Hastings! Your assistance is required immediately. Good Lord, Poirot, that's a lot of smoke. And now you are up to speed with the situation. I have evaluated the position we find. If you're going to use the fire extinguisher, now would be the time. Très bien. That's it. One more should do it. Detective Inspector, it is imperative we search the crime scene as soon as possible. You mean my crime scene? If I may, I can count on one hand how many crime scenes I have seen in my life, and although they are somewhere I don't wish to spend too much time, as the representative of Lloyd's of London Bank, it is my responsibility to handle all matters regarding the now stolen painting. A weak attempt. But I've got more on my plate than dealing with some paper pusher getting his knickers in a twist. You've got until I return to do whatever it is you need to do. And if I find one thing out of place... You may question my authority in this case, but I will not have my professionalism questioned. Whatever you say. Ah. Hmm. Huh. Aha. From analyzing the victim's body, 
I can conclude that the cause of death was not dead by the flames. Not by the flames? Then what? That is what we are yet to determine. Huh. Ah. Magnifique. Monsieur Hastings, your assistance is required. Of course. What do you need? What can I do for you? From analyzing the victim's body, I can conclude that the cause of death was not dead by the flames. Not by the flames? Then what? That is what we are yet to determine. What can I do for you? Mr. Poirot, you are a genius. What can I do for you? That would never have even occurred to me. I've got a lot to learn. What can I do for you? Let us get back to the scene.
Another success. I never doubted myself. What do you need? What can I do for you? Let us get back to this. Didn't you speak with her neighbor before? Might she be able to help? Is it that copper again? What do you want? I was hoping to ask you some questions regarding the fire. May I ask your name? You aren't coming in. You can get that into your head now. Mrs. Colsham. Camilla Colsham. Merci, Madame Colsham. She hardly had any visitors, but yesterday it was like she had a sign up offering out free ale. If you would be so kind as to talk us through the events as you remember them. Well, I saw her leaving with a couple of paintings under her arm. You've seen her work? Not really my cup of tea. Then there was that Porsche-looking chap. I heard him before I saw him. Like an elephant on those stairs. Next came the professional-looking fair. He's got some money in those pockets, that's for sure. I saw him leaving with a painting, too. Oh, and the argument with another man? I couldn't hear what it was all about, but he had a set of lungs on him. You are doing a wonderful job, Madame Colcham. You can keep the patronizing tone to yourself. She must have turned her radio up to disguise what they were saying, but I tell you this, I'd rather have listened to them than that racket. It wasn't long before he was storming down the stairs. I don't think he'd heard the expression light-footed before. Would you be able to remember any other details of the gentleman? Through this people, you can barely tell who's man and woman. I didn't hear her leave, but when I heard that door downstairs slam, I knew it was her. I opened my door and gave her what for. And you know what she did? She waved me off, bottle of bubbles in hand. Ranting about being dry, she looked two sheets to the wind, if you ask me. Only after did she turn the radio down. I wasn't going to waste the peace and quiet, and I got ready for bed. I was getting right into the exciting bit of my book. Perkins' first one, you know. I do like Perkins. Well, that's when I first smelt the smoke coming from the hall. And then you lot showed up. Merci, madame. You have been most accommodating. Oh, and I found this in the garden. It's obviously hers. I was going to put it to her letterbox, but, well, you know. The cock from a champagne bottle. 
It would not be a giant leap to assume this came from Mademoiselle Kortsmeid's apartment. A smell lingers on the cock. Bitter almonds. Merci, Madame Colcham. Yes, I would say a moment of genius. The answer was staring me in the face. What do you need? It wasn't an accident. It was set on purpose, using turpentine to douse any evidence of them being there, and the forgery. An almost perfect execution, had we not arrived in time before the evidence had burned away. But why try and get rid of the necklace? Spoken like a true detective. Of course, the painting. Irene had made forgeries of the Penitent Magdalen painting and was likely selling them for a pretty penny, I might add. Almonds? I've never had champagne that tasted of almonds. One would hope not. Mademoiselle's lips may hold the missing clue we require. What can I do for you? That would never have even occurred to me. I've got a lot to learn. What can I do for you? Let us get back to the scene. become clearer. Come now. Think on what happened. What do you need? I don't know if I'm cut out for this. Take your time. Consider what we have seen and learnt of Mademoiselle Cotsmith's time here yesterday. Okay, firstly, we know that she had a number of visitors and an argument with one of them. Among these visitors, one left with a painting, perhaps another forgery. Très bien. Irene wasn't drinking alone, and whoever she was drinking with likely poisoned her. The killer used a syringe to inject a liquid form of the poison through the cork and into the bottle. Potassium cyanide. Traces of the compound can be found in nature, but dangerous levels, such as those present, can be detected by its notable almond smell. And she fell victim shortly after in her chair. What are you going to tell him? The truth. 
He may hope for a simple and somewhat convenient version of events, but he cannot ignore the facts that we shall present. My crime scene still intact? Of course, Detective Inspector. There is something that... There's nothing more to say. Pardon, Detective Inspector. The truth is that Mademoiselle Irene Court Smythe was murdered. Right you are. I'll be sure to make a note. But you won't. Excuse me? Are you forgetting who you're talking to? He is well aware of your authority and your capability of coming to the same conclusion. We only wish to inform you of our findings. Well, my men have been in, as have I, and I've concluded that the mademoiselle, as you so elegantly called her, made off with the painting and decided to have a few drinks to celebrate. She passed out drunk in the chair, candle still lit, and the place went up like a match. Detective Inspector, s'il vous plaît. It is really not that simple. Who are you calling simple? He's not calling you simple, he's saying that isn't how it happened. How can you ignore the bottle of champagne that had been tampered with? The smell of poison on the cork. We're both experts in poison now, are you? I do not wish to stand here and argue credentials. Mademoiselle Cotsmythe was killed, not by the fire that burnt through her home, but at the hands of another. Her drink, laced with potassium cyanide. Quite the imagination you two have. Look, we can show... No. We shall leave the detective inspector to discover the truth for himself. Detective, adieu. Monsieur Hastings, you must learn which battles are worth the fight. Besides, we have no time to stand squabbling with him. We have a murder to solve. That was quite a night. I feel exhilarated, yet exhausted. Triumphant at what we have discovered, but mournful for Miss Cold Smythe. It is being able to control those emotions and still see the bigger picture that separates the best detectives from those that merely lack the thought of such responsibility. So do you think it must have been one of the guests at the gala? An accomplice disguised as a guest turned murderer. A master criminal they may appear to be, but they have never crossed paths with Belgium's greatest detective. I think I just felt a chill. Now we must speak with the guests of the gala again, as well as find Monsieur Christiansen, who has continued to evade my questions. I have no doubt one or more of them will hold the answers we require regarding the death of Mademoiselle Cotsmythe. Mademoiselle, do you have a moment to spare? Of course, Detective. I'm hoping you have some good news for me. Goodness. You've found the painting, haven't you? A painting was recovered. A forgery, but it was damaged by the fire. What on earth are you talking about? Forgery? Fire? It ran rampant through Mademoiselle Cotsmythe's apartment. She's... dead. She would never be so, but with all of those flammable paints and... No! Mademoiselle Warbeck appears quite distraught at the news. Perhaps I should have considered the nature in which it was delivered. I respected her as an artist and a friend. I do not wish to push Mademoiselle Warbeck too far while in such a state. But as a friend, 
I must know if she was aware of Mademoiselle Cotsmite's plan. Perhaps, as a friend, she let slip of her plans. Her plan for what? Stealing the painting? Making a forgery? Do you really think I'd let her do that? She must have had help from someone she trusted. If she did, it wasn't me she confided in. I've been here trying to calm down the trustees. You did not leave the museum? I was here until the early hours. After the meeting, I wrote a letter to my father. I wanted his advice on what to do. It's just all so... Excuse me, gentlemen. I must go and make a phone call to an artist. I shan't be long. Merci, mademoiselle. That is all for now. Oh. Hmm. Aha. What do you need? What can I... Merci. Bartholomew! Yeah, push, 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 push. Where are you? Bartholomew, enough now, out you come. I'm sorry, I just don't have time to talk now. I have to find Bartholomew. Have you placed a missing persons report? Really, detective? Bartholomew is the church cat. I think a missing persons report might be a little overboard. I am sure with our assistance we shall find him in half the time. And then, perhaps you will have time to answer my questions. Fine. All that matters now is that we find him. His name is Bartholomew, and I'd appreciate it if you spoke of him as such. Pardon. When did you last see Bartholomew? Better. Well, you see, the poor creature took an interest in my easel. He leapt up, knocking over some of my supplies, and gave himself a fright. He bolted out of sight, and I've not seen him since. Merci, Your Grace.
Logical thinking shall always prevail. What do you need? What can I do? That would never have even occurred to me. I've got a lot to learn. What can I do for you? Merci, monsieur. Oh, uh, yes, uh, Thomas, one of my parishioners, would usually have sorted that for me. But he decided this weekend, of all weekends, was the best time to holiday to Margate. Well, did you say the glass was broken? The easel. I was painting, and Bartholomew was obviously in a boisterous mood and knocked over the water jar. Merci, Your Grace. Hot on the culprit's heels. Where is the sense? Magnifique. One step closer to revealing the truth. What a revelation! What do you need? What can I do? I question whether the bishop's version of events is accurate. Perhaps he threw the glass jar at Bartholomew because he was on the altar. I know that's how it looks, but I can't imagine someone being so cruel. What tells us where the cat ran to next? Borrow, you are a genius. How can we know where the cat ran to next? Borrow, you are a genius. Huh. Huh. Monsieur Aylesworth. Ah, a detective that actually seems to be doing something to find my painting. Uh, what can I do for you? Quite well, thank you. The infirmary discharged you already? With a clean bill of health. I didn't want to wait around using up valuable resources. An honorable gesture. 
I was straight off to the House of Commons. I take it you haven't read today's newspaper? I'm afraid I have had more pressing matters. It certainly makes for an interesting read. I was not aware reporters were permitted inside the house. They aren't. I left and went to the London Illustrated News office. I gave my statement there. I can't for the life of me remember the chap's name. Uh, rather pleasant, though. Anyway, you're a busy man. I'd hate to take up too much of your time. It does not take a great detective to pick up on Monsieur Ellsworth's ever so subtle hint. Is this about the insurance claim? It was merely a necessary precaution. I'm sure with you on the case, it won't be long before it's returned. I do not doubt my abilities to return the painting, but I question why he felt it necessary to talk of sensitive details regarding the investigation to a national news outlet. It would not surprise me to learn of him using his loss for cynical gain. I assume you saw the article in the paper? Oui, monsieur. A fantastic opportunity for you to express your political opinions. Oh, the people must know what I stand for. I'm here for them. I will not take up any more of your time. Gentlemen, what can I do for you? I was hoping to speak with Mademoiselle Farquhar. I'm afraid she already has her hands full with the story. Unless you've come with a bigger one than what she's working on. Perhaps another time, gentlemen. We really are very busy. Perhaps another time, gentlemen. We really are very busy. Perhaps another time, gentlemen. We really are very busy. I will not take up any more of your time. Bonjour, madame. Do you have a moment to... Has something happened? You bet something's happened! That slime bag! How dare he say my performance was mediocre! I'm sure he didn't mean... That's it! I give up! I'm done with this acting! With this city! Take a deep breath. Take one man's opinion, and a wrong one at that. He's not powerful enough to topple a career like yours. You're right. Let him think what he wants. I'm sorry. I'm an actress. It's my prerogative to be a little overdramatic. Very impressive, Monsieur Hastings. A position in negotiations would suit you well. Is there something I can help you both with? You do know what I do, don't you? I was on stage, performing in front of a packed house. I did not mean to. Zack, he was there. You two seemed pretty friendly. He'll tell you. So will that Russian lady from the gala she was with him. Monsieur Demir and Mademoiselle Babania, together. Oh, he's already seen it. I told him he didn't have to come. A supportive husband indeed. Yeah. Real supportive. Your guess is as good as mine. It is most important that I speak with him. Then you've got a missing painting and a missing husband on your hands because I haven't seen him. 
Look, I don't think I can take much more today. Mademoiselle Cot Smythe was found murdered last night. Okay. I thought perhaps the news would be a little more jarring. Oh, don't get me wrong. I don't really want to hear about anyone dying, but me and her... Well, there's no love lost. Madame Allen's nonchalant response has certainly caught me off guard. You have been most helpful. What do you need? That sounds rather ominous. I would not ask you to do something I would not consider doing myself. Only on this occasion it is I that must execute the other part of the plan. What do you need me to do? Madame Hélène, you must hold her attention while I take the opportunity to look around. I certainly can. I'll appeal to her love of attention. Mrs. Allen, that photograph there, is that really you on a live film set?
Voila. Your Grace, now that Bartholomew has been found, would you... As my way of thanks, I'll answer your questions. Very well. Get on with it. I hope that comes from an inquisitive nature rather than a place of accusation. I was at a museum trustees meeting, trying to finally make a decision on that girl. You mean Mademoiselle Warbeck? Who else? She is running that museum into the ground. And following the meeting? I returned to the church to prepare for Compline prayers. Although, I don't think I was alone. You don't think? I got the feeling that someone had followed me from the museum. I never saw them, but I know what I felt. None. I knew her merely by reputation, oh, and a questionable one at that. Do you want to tell me what all these questions are about? Mademoiselle Cortsmite was murdered last night. If you plan on being the bearer of such news, perhaps you should think of going about it with a little more civility. How did the young girl die? There was a fire in her apartment, although it wasn't the flames that took her life, but poison. Arson and poisoning. Oh, what is this world coming to? Bishop Mountjoy claims he barely knew Mademoiselle Godsmythe, but still showed a level of empathy I was not expecting. Perhaps I judged his blunt facade too quickly. Found it? Really? Oh, heavens be! The Lord has shown his will once more. I can only assume his delayed excitement came from being off guard. Unfortunately, I must turn his elation into disappointment. If your grace would allow me to finish, a forgery of it was found in Mademoiselle Cortsmith's apartment, but it was destroyed in the fire. She was the thief all along. Well, that just... A, a, a forgery? You mean she made a copy of it? It appears that way. I will rightly light a candle for her soul this evening. But that will not give her absolution from what she faces, kneeling before our Lord. What do you need? What can I do for you? What do you need? What can I... Merci, Mr. Huh. Hmm. Ah.
Gentlemen, what can I do for you? I was hoping to speak with Mademoiselle Farqua. I'm afraid she already has her hands full with the story. Unless you've come with a bigger one than what she's working on. Let's not be so hasty. That could be just what we need. Gentlemen, what can I do for you? This is your office. It's very impressive. Mademoiselle, would you have time to answer some questions? I don't really have time right now. Perhaps we can schedule... I assure you I shall remain focused and my questions relevant. Fine. Make it fast. Is she all right? I'm afraid not. Heavens, how awful. Did she have any close relatives? I do not believe so. And her parents have both passed also. She was the last remaining caught smythe. A question I did not expect. Although at least she is showing some form of compassion for Mademoiselle Gottsmythe's family, or lack thereof. I only met her recently in a professional capacity. What are they going to do with her exhibit? I cannot say, but they may not be as forthcoming with her work now. I'm sorry, Detective. I don't understand. Mademoiselle Gottsmythe was behind the painting's disappearance and a forgery was discovered in her apartment. So she stole the original and made a forgery? What heavens for? That we are still yet to learn. Am I a suspect? We are just trying to gather all the information. Isn't that right, Poirot? We? Oui, that is correct. I'm sorry. It's just a lot to take in at once. I was working late into the evening yesterday. I had to get my article on the gala written. And the photographs, they had to be developed. There was probably someone still around in the office if you wanted to check. I'm sure you want to have every I dotted and T crossed. Really? I must have been so busy not to notice him. At least you can be sure of where I was. Was there anyone else present in the office? If Mr. Aylesworth was there, Nathaniel, my editor, must have been. It strikes me as rather strange that Mademoiselle does not recall seeing such an important figure in the office. But not everyone can be as observant as I. I shall speak with the editor, as he will be able to confirm the presence of both in the office. Merci, Mademoiselle. That is all for now. What can I do for you, Detective? Well, Detective, this is a surprise. A surprise, Monsieur? I wasn't expecting to be on the receiving end of an interrogation. I had nothing to do with the fire or her death. You are aware of Mademoiselle Gottsmythe's demise? Hmm. There isn't much in this city I don't know about. And for your little notepad, or wherever you're storing the facts, that report... Uh, Farquhar, she was in the office and can confirm I was there. It appears that Monsieur Aylesworth is more preoccupied with proving his innocence than showing any compassion for Mademoiselle Gottsmythe herself. I will not take up any more of your time.
It looks like she was telling the truth after all. About composing the letter, we. Oui. But we cannot confirm where it was penned. What's all this other stuff? I don't think it's from the letter to her father. It seems we have stumbled across the names and addresses for the guests of the gala. Although they are not all legible. We have gathered all the information we can from the guests at the gala. All except... Betty's husband, Mr. Christensen. Oui. We are now in possession of his address, where he is no doubt hiding like a frightened young boy avoiding his headmaster's ruler. Ah. Voila. And just like that, the address of Monsieur Christiansen's apartment. Remind me why we've lied our way into a man's apartment while he's not here? Monsieur Christiansen was accused of harassing a young lady who has now been murdered, and he has not been seen since, even by his wife. Does that not strike you as peculiar? Do you really think he could be capable of murder? I believe everyone is capable, under the right circumstances. And right now, I believe Monsieur Christiansen is in that position. While we have no suspect to question, let us use our time wisely and search for clues. Leave no stone unturned. Ah. Uh -huh. Aha. Hmm. Hmm. Oh. Huh. Hmm. Oh. Huh. Ah. Monsieur Hastings, your assistance is required. Of course. What do you need? What can I do for you? Monsieur Christiansen was at the scene of the crime smoking with Mademoiselle Cortesmaid before her death. 
Could he be the holder of the original penitent Magdalene painting? He may very well have hidden it here. Gentlemen, you're back. Allow me to introduce myself properly. I am Detective Hercule Poirot of the Kingdom of Belgium's police force. You should have led with that before. Nathaniel Dryden, editor of the London Illustrated News. My apologies. I was not aware of your position on our initial meeting. That's quite all right. You were still more polite than most of the people that come through my door. What can I do for you? I did, but that was supposed to be an exclusive. How did you know? It is a detective's job to know such things. Doesn't really explain how, but okay. He said he had something to tell me that was going to blow me away. I couldn't say no. Indeed, she was. Although she was working on her own story, so I left her to it. At no point did she leave the office? She's a very hard worker and won't leave until the story is just how she wants it. Needless to say, she outstayed me. She had photographs to develop too, so was in the dark room for some time. I'm sorry, gentlemen, but I have another appointment, if you don't mind. This place is usually full of all sorts that think they have a story for us or want to know more about something we've published. I was meaning to mention that to Florence, actually. Mention what, monsieur? A young foreign girl came in asking about a piece that was on show at the museum. Originated in Eastern Europe somewhere, and Florence had written an article on it. Did she say why she was so interested? She said she was researching its journey from its first home with an affluent family. I forget the name. I couldn't tell her much more besides that it was going to be moved from the museum shortly. No doubt into another exhibition somewhere. Could this inquisitive young woman have been Mademoiselle Babania? But why so curious about that particular piece of jewelry? Merci. You have been most accommodating. Mm-hmm. Ah. It is the missing painting, and this photograph is identical to one that had been burnt in the fire. What do you need? What can I... I will... Ah, Poirot! Good to see you. The feeling is mutual, Monsieur Demir. Ah, you and your formalities. Let's talk over here. Is everything all right? Miss Farquhar is interviewing Betty. I thought we should talk privately over here. 
I heard about Irene. Tragic news. And what's this I hear about poison? Who told you that? Uh, it doesn't take long for news like that to spread in this city. I would appreciate some discretion between friends. But we, oui, Mademoiselle was poisoned. Anything I can help with? I won't take offense, as I know you're just doing your job. I attended the evening performance of Betty's show. Anastasia and I had a grand old time. She accompanied you as your date? She was at a loose end after the gala. Don't worry, I'm not here to tread on any toes. I mean, he can hold a conversation of sorts. You do not think particularly highly of him. <sighs> I've never had a problem with him before. I just... Look, I ran into him last night in a bar after the show, and by the looks of him, it wasn't his first drink of the night. He was trying to sell me a lucrative business opportunity, a way we could both make some quick money. Did you take him up on his offer? God, no. When someone offers you something that sounds too good to be true, it usually is. That was some weekend. You should get him to tell you about it sometime. Uh, bragging is a sign of overconfidence and grandiose behavior. You know, at first I found those kind of replies annoying. But now... Charming, almost. I shall accept that as both a compliment and a sign of your maturity. If it wasn't for the detective here, I would probably still be wallowing in my own anger and self-pity. You have lived a life many of us have only heard about in stories. A life that we all hope no one will have to live again. I second that. Your family must be proud of the man you have become, as am I. I will not take up any more of your time. I do not mean to interrupt. Then perhaps you should wait until we have finished the interview. I do not mean to interrupt. Then perhaps... Mademoiselle Farqua, could I speak with you for a moment? I'm in the middle of an interview. I really must insist. That was incredibly unprofessional, Detective. If we are to discuss professionalism, perhaps we should talk about your work with Mademoiselle Cot Smythe. I think you've got me confused with... Enough, Mademoiselle. It is time for the truth. You don't think I was involved? Please do not feign ignorance, mademoiselle. Where did mademoiselle receive her inspiration to make her forgeries? I remind you that I stand before you as a detective. It would be wise not to continue this charade any longer. Poirot, maybe we should... Monsieur Hastings, if mademoiselle Farquhar requires someone to speak in her defense, she can contact a lawyer. That won't be necessary. She asked me to photograph certain pieces of art, that's all. I didn't know what she was doing with them. I swear. I have no idea. I thought she was just trying to help my career. And I needed it. Your career does not appear to need the help of a criminal. She had such confidence. She knew all the right things to say. And she got exactly what she wanted from you. I was financially dependent on her. She paid for the lifestyle that I had found myself in. That she pushed me into. Couldn't you have just said no to her? And risk her exposing me for what I had done. She was the one holding all the cards. 
I had no way of proving it was all her plan. I had no other choice but to do what she said. Merci, mademoiselle. That is all for now. I am sorry to have interrupted your interview earlier. By the looks of it, what you were saying was much more exciting. Care to spill? Perhaps we should stick to my questions to you. You have been most helpful. What do you need? What can I do for you? I will not take up any more of your time. Bonjour, mademoiselle. Is everything all right? Do not worry. It will not be long before the murderer is brought to justice. It's not that. I just cannot understand how such historically relevant pieces like this remain in British hands. It doesn't belong here. I am sorry, mademoiselle. I do not have the answer. I'm sure they are well maintained, if that is any consolation. No, I'm sorry. I'm sure this is the last thing you wish to be talking about. Is there something I can help you with? Well, after it was all cut short rather abruptly, we made our way to Mrs. Allen's play. We, oui, mademoiselle? Mr. Demir and myself. We were all at a loose end and he was kind enough to invite me. Oh, I wasn't aware Mr. Hastings was to be the focus of Florence's article. On the contrary, it is only one of many she took at the gala. What interests me is the brooch. Would you believe I found it? Amazing how careless some people can be. And you are intending on returning it? Of course! It just slipped my mind with all the commotion of the painting. Mademoiselle Gott's mind no longer requires it. I shall hold on to it for now. Yes, and it was something that I wanted to speak with you about, actually. At the gala, I spoke with a bishop and he mentioned a painting he had seen last year. But it was one that Idred had been stolen. He couldn't have seen it when he said, unless... Well, it didn't sit well with me. So when Evelyn escorted you both to the restoration room and he left, I followed him. I stayed well back. And the bishop is hardly the most threatening. I followed him into his church, but he was gone. I looked everywhere, but he was nowhere to be seen. It was like he just evaporated. He is a man of God, not a magician. I don't know what to say. He wasn't there. I decided to wait outside, but when he eventually left, he had a wrapped package under his arm. You have been most helpful, mademoiselle. I shall not take up any more of your time. Oh. 
If it is, it's been written by someone that hasn't quite grasped the English language yet. Fire to Irene. Some kind of instruction to commit arson. It seems too obvious, but that does not mean it is wrong. Aha. Hmm. What do you need? The argument with Irene at the gala, and then with his wife after. Madame Allen had uncovered their relationship. But even with this revelation, what still remains a mystery is Monsieur Christiansen's involvement with the theft. What do you need? What can I do for you? I will not take up any more of your time. Huh. You're just full of questions, aren't you? Own? You don't just own an animal detective. He's part of our family. Pardon. And his name? Enoch. And I ask you the question, what's he got to do with anything? And how do you know about him? Purely curiosity, madame. Enoch. A splendid name for a most handsome dog. And it was your husband that mentioned him at the gala. It means faithful in Norwegian. It was Johan's idea. You have been most helpful.
Huh. Aha. Oh. Hmm. The pigment of this paint is brighter than it should be. Meaning? We have found our second forgery. Oh. Aha. Poro, the door. What are you doing in? Ah. Monsieur Christiansen. Welcome home. I... Uh, um... This doesn't look good, does it? We have much to discuss. So Mr. Christensen had an opportunity and a motive, but he continues to deny killing her. And still two forgeries remain. I knew it. Pardon, monsieur? I knew that's why she stayed so friendly with her. Irene always said she was besotted that she could get her to do whatever she wanted. Perhaps you should elaborate on the identity of her? The curator. Evelyn, what's her name? She could spot a forgery at 20 yards. What better person to show you the robes so you can make your own? If the board of trustees at the museum got wind of this, Miss Warbeck's career would be finished. And in her own world, if anyone was to jeopardize her career... She wouldn't be held responsible for her actions. It seems Monsieur Christiansen may not be the only person tied to Mademoiselle Goldsmith who has a secret to hide. Madame Hélène has confirmed the surprise appearance of her husband during the intermission of her show. And as expected, she... Uh... Monsieur Hastings, there is something troubling you? If I may speak freely. You do not have to ask my permission. This is all very overwhelming. We seem to be taking one step forward and two steps back. I can understand your confusion. You cannot allow it to consume you and your emotions to take charge. Easier said than done. I just... Oui, monsieur? Must you be so hard on her? I presume you refer to Mademoiselle Farquhar. You talk about emotions not taking charge. 
She is a suspect in a murder investigation, not a guest at afternoon tea. If Mademoiselle Farquhar is more important than discovering the truth and finding justice... I would have thought you would know better of me by now. I'm sorry, but I don't agree with how you spoke to her. When it is your investigation, you will have the authority to conduct your questioning how you see fit. Until then, I will continue in the manner that has and continues to bring criminals to justice. And I'll just keep my opinions to myself. Let us focus on the case. What do we know about Mademoiselle Warbeck's relationship with the deceased? Mr. Christensen suggested she had romantic feelings towards Irene, but she was just another of her pawns. She cleaned the master key to hide Mademoiselle Godsmythe's actions, but perhaps she then became worried about her own involvement. You think she could have killed her to stop the truth coming out to the trustees? Which would in turn ruin her career. It is certainly a possibility. Mademoiselle Warbeck, if you have a moment. I'm actually rather busy. Is there any chance you could come back later? I would have thought recovering your painting and identifying a murderer would be at the top of your priority list. I'm sorry. It's just been so hectic here. I can spare five minutes. Honorable? That's a good one. I get the sense you two spend your time butting faces. Uh, butting heads. Uh, we oui, butting heads. It would be easier to say what we do agree on. I don't know what he has against me. I didn't like one of his suggestions for an exhibition, and since then he's made it pretty clear he wants me gone. Usually after an exhibition, the artist's work would be returned to them. But on this occasion, that is not an option. I still have every intention of going ahead with the exhibit that includes her work, even if the trustees are against it. I'm still the curator of this museum. I'm hanging her work now, and that's that. I recall Mademoiselle Gottsmythe referred to the exhibit as hers. The level of arrogance and hypocrisy is now even more evident. You have been most helpful.
Your Grace. Detective Poirot, good morning. Can I assume there is still a murderer loose on the streets? London is a very large city. I would fathom a guess that there is more than one, as I have not had the chance to arrest him yet. Your confidence astounds me. Look, you had better make it quick. I'm meeting the young Russian girl here. She had some questions about the museum building at the gala. Questions I'm sure only I can answer. God teaches us to forgive and love thy neighbor. Sometimes that can be more challenging than expected. Has she offended you personally? Using the museum for her sordid meetings with those uncouth men? I'd say so. She doesn't strike me as someone that would be caught up in that sort of thing. And what sort of thing am I referring to? Well, I... Exactly. If you don't know, it would be wise to remain quiet until you're spoken to. I walked in on them in the restoration room a couple of weeks ago. I had come straight from my regular Sunday service, as I had some business to tend to. I opened the door and saw them all sitting there, scheming and planning. You are not aware of what they are meeting about? Do you need to wash your ears out? I just told you what they were up to. And I could see she had the financial books out. Why would she need them, hmm? I'm not even privy to those. And when she saw me, they stopped talking immediately. Surely that is a sign of their guilt, hmm? Merci, Your Grace. Go right ahead, detective. Is it necessary? You do not wish to impede my investigation? No, but I don't really understand what they have to do with the case. It is important that... Uh, that is quite all right, mademoiselle. It was not my intention to make you feel uncomfortable. You have been most helpful.
Go on, then. You make it sound as though it is I that has a problem with her. Forgive me, have I misinterpreted her? If you cannot even understand what I have to say, how will you ever understand what Jesus and his Father in heaven require of you? That is perhaps a matter best discussed at a later time. What I wish to know now is about you and Mademoiselle Warbeck. There is no need to lose one's temper, detective. The Lord tells us... Your Grace, please. Uh, a lesson for another time. Let's just say that I certainly wouldn't have given that common thief an exhibition, especially now. Merci, Your Grace. Go right ahead, detective. You have been most... Oh. Oh.
their success. The pieces of the puzzle are finally coming. Bishop Mountjoy was quite adamant Mademoiselle Warbeck's meeting was something untoward. Although I believe anything she does, he will likely look upon negatively. To have a young woman undermine him in front of the other trustees would have been the ultimate insult. He allows his personal feelings to accentuate his cynical side, instead of allowing facts and evidence to show the truth, as one should. Mademoiselle Warbeck was doing nothing detrimental to the museum. In fact, quite the opposite with her attempt to modernize it, likely against the old-fashioned trustees' opinions. Go right ahead, detective. I wonder who you've been talking to. What did he tell you? That I've been up to no good? Not in so many worlds. I was meeting with artists for a new exhibition. He has no idea what he is talking about when it comes to art. Or really anything for that fact. He can't see the future. The new way that will change the art world forever. As well as the uncouth gentleman you met, he also mentioned the financial books. Uncouth? Anyone not wearing full priest robes is uncouth to him. I wouldn't show Horace the finances because it has nothing to do with him. And he's simply looking for any excuse to have me fired. Nothing more. Well, considering he didn't want her work anywhere near the museum, I wouldn't have said they had one at all. Then the next thing I heard was that he had commissioned her to do some pieces for his church. I didn't know anything about it until Irene told me. Do you know what he had commissioned her to paint? No idea, I'm afraid. She was sworn to secrecy. You have been most helpful. Go on, then. Uh, you'll have to be more specific than that, Detective. The paintings produced by Mademoiselle Cotsmith's brush. Oh, yes. Well, I thought it was necessary if she was to feature in the museum. You couldn't just use her other pieces as reference? I, I suppose I could have. But I don't actually see why it is any concern of yours. It is not as though I kept it, anyway. I wasn't happy with it clogging up my bin, let alone my museum. Merci, Your Grace.
Hmm. Aha. Huh. Oh. Ah. Aha. Hmm. Ah. Hmm. Mm hmm. I should not be surprised by my own skills. Some would say a lucky guess. I... The answer was staring me in the face. It appears that the good bishop has been replacing the church's original artworks with fakes painted by Mademoiselle Cort Smythe. He commissioned her to make these forgeries so that no one would notice when the originals disappeared. Disappearing where, though? You don't think he's selling them, do you? Why else? Mademoiselle Babania appears to have been right about the bishop's connection to the black market. Now, Hastings, we must ask ourselves. Where might Bishop Mountjoy be hiding the original paintings from the church before he sells them on?
We must gain access to the space behind the confessional. Why don't you have a look first? Do not tell me you are afraid of the dark. Not the dark, just pitch black eerie passages in old churches. Poro, where are we? If I am not mistaken, this is part of the secret tunnels that were built hundreds of years ago to sneak those that did not agree with the powers of the country out. And why exactly are we in here? The why must never be obvious. That is the whole point. Right. Huh. We have our third forgery. There is evidence of a much more modern painting on the back of the canvas. Thank goodness. Don't know how I would explain finding the original in such a state. Bishop Mountjoy must have discovered the painting that he received from Mademoiselle Cortesmythe was one of her forgeries. At lashed out. Now it makes sense. He's been using this room to store his own private art collection. I can picture him sitting here smug as anything, surrounded by stolen paintings. What I find most unfortunate... ...is that not only does he deprive the world of beauty and joy from seeing these works, but he also keeps them in such dark and dank conditions, the old fool. He's even having to light his candle clock to keep from drifting off down here. Such a waste. What do you think, Poirot? Ah, one's opinions are now worth listening to. I was only voicing my thoughts. You have thoughts beside those of Mademoiselle Farquhar? Really, Poirot? You still think so little of me. When one exclaims such regard for a suspect in a murder investigation, it is hard not to think any other way and comment so. You may not be so accustomed to the idea of showing, or at least having, some form of empathy for our fellow man. There is a difference between empathy and lust. And there is a difference between commenting and being rude and obnoxious. I was not expecting Monsieur Hastings to be so sensitive on the matter. Perhaps this conversation is best safe for when we are not trapped together. What was that? Oh, just the bishop's candle clock. I don't know about you, but I've had enough of this place. Let's get out of here. What are you doing, Poirot? S'il vous plaît, un moment. The bishop's candle clock has forced me to question everything of the murder scene that I previously thought I knew. We must return to Mademoiselle Gortsmythe's apartment. Perhaps that is a job best left for you, by yourself.
Aha. Hmm. Hmm. Aha. Et maintenant... Oh. I believe myself to be the greatest detective in the most prestigious police force in the world. But I have been duped and swindled, falling directly into the trap laid by the killer. And now I stand here alone, contemplating what is to come next. Monsieur Hastings was quick to make his excuses to retire to his abode and not return to the scene of the crime by my side. I hope there is not something further that troubles him. One does not need added strains at a time when steps must be retraced and a new timeline considered. Sacré! I have spent my time staring into the sun when deceit and deception has taken place in the shadows. A murderer remains free. But the truth of the fire eludes Detective Hercule Poirot no more, and soon neither will their identity. I cannot believe I allowed myself to fall for such a deceptive move. The killer knew I would ask for an alibi and they knew how to cover their tracks perfectly. Now though I have the upper hand, the killer believes that I have extinguished all avenues of my questioning, unaware I know the truth of the fire. I wish Monsieur Hastings were here. I was perhaps too harsh with him. I know of his want for the same as I, the truth. But now I fear that I have lost him to my own tenacious demeanor. Now more than ever do I need my little gray cells working at full capacity. Monsieur Demir and Mademoiselle Babania. I am glad to say that they both still have alibis, as the show had just reached its second act. I can be sure that neither was involved. Mademoiselle Farqua. She claims that she was in the dark room developing pictures. And even with this new discovery, her alibi stands. Monsieur Dryden can confirm. Monsieur Christiansen, one of my key suspects, drinking alone except for a brief encounter with Monsieur Demir. 
But Madame Allen can substantiate his trip to see her at the theater to apologize during the intermission. Which leads us to the good Madame Allen, on stage performing, innocent. A side note, I must make an effort to see her production. From what I have heard, she sounds quite captivating. The Honorable Bishop Mountjoy. His Compline prayers had not yet begun, but Mademoiselle Warbeck and he were together in what I can only imagine to be an uncomfortable meeting for them both. Her innocence has already been confirmed, although upon learning of how she has been treated, I would not have been surprised. Last but certainly not least, Monsieur Aylesworth and the article in a newspaper documenting his, as some see, heroic speech amongst the House of Commons is alibi enough for the murder. And where are we left now? Every suspect seemingly as innocent as they were yesterday. But when one looks most innocent, that is when Detective Poirot is most suspicious. Finally, a face I can trust. Everything all right, Poirot? I'm afraid things could not be further from all right. Don't tell me the famous Detective Poirot is stumped. Stumped? No. Perplexed? Oui. Perhaps you can be my perfect distraction. I may not be the celebrated doctor that my father hoped for, but I still like to keep up with recent medical journals. And what is the latest discovery? This particular article is about the effect of cocaine on the user's body. I thought I liked to have a good time, but that drug, too much for me. What makes you say that? I wouldn't want my heart beating at the speed of a locomotive. Here, read for yourself. I haven't actually. I gave him my office telephone number and said he could call any time, but not a peep. You sound surprised. Yeah, he probably wants to keep his health issues out of the public eye. Hence me offering to help, but he seems to be just fine, surprisingly. Do you think there is a chance he could have faked it all? How those little grey cells of yours work sometimes. Amazing! Please, my friend. You're serious? Don't know why, but I suppose he could have. At this point, anything is a possibility. I think a visit to Monsieur Aylesworth at the Royal Society of Art is in order. Mademoiselle Babania, a pleasure as always. Good morning, gentlemen. I'm afraid my pleasantries are to be cut short this morning. I have a most pressing matter. Good morning, Mademoiselle. My apologies for my earlier departure. That's quite all right. Mr. Demir informed me of the facts. The case has taken a direction I had not foreseen, and it now leaves me. I will not stand here and listen to you wallow. How can I help? Merci, mademoiselle. That is all for now.
Just a moment. I'm coming. What a great commotion coming from behind the door. What on earth is Monsieur Ellsworth up to? Ah, Detective, what can I do for you? Could you spare a moment of your time? If you are feeling up to it? Why wouldn't I? You are recovering from a potentially fatal heart attack. I would not want to aggravate or upset you in any way. Ah, oh, are we really going over this again? It would help me clear up some discrepancies. Very well. As I've said before, I was in the House of Commons addressing the bench, as you know. And then I was speaking with the reporter. The editor, Nathaniel Dryden. If you say so, at the news office. Monsieur Ellsworth is sticking to his story. I did not expect that it would be easy to unsettle a politician of his experience. And why would I? And why would I? Oh, to thank him for his help at the museum. Yes, of course. Uh, I've been meaning to send him a thank you gift. One would think that thanking the man that saved your life would be further up your priorities. I'm a very busy man, as I'm sure you understand. And I don't know whether I'd go as far as saying he saved my life. On the contrary. Had Monsieur Demir not been there with his extensive medical training and a man of your age, perhaps you would not be here talking with me today. If Monsieur Ellsworth is not prepared to tell the truth, perhaps I can use his own pompous nature and guilt against him. The nurse said herself that I had the heart of a young athlete. It'll take more than that to slow me down. <laughs> well, I would not take that as a sign to start the sporting career. Merci, monsieur. I find myself in a most problematic position. My associate, Monsieur Hastings, is nowhere to be found when I need him the most. There must be someone else that I can call upon. Someone to fill the shoes of Monsieur Hastings. For the time being, at least. The obvious choice would be Monsieur Demir. But I wonder if he is suited to the task that is required. You need only ask. Go on. I require a distraction. I promise you will come to no harm and... Uh... Who am I to distract and from what? Monsieur Ellsworth. I need to gain access to his office without his watchful eye. Detective Poirot preparing to cross the line of law. Not cross. Merely tiptoe alongside. I assume you have already devised a plan? A requested tour of the Royal Society of Art Building should give me appropriate time. Then that is what I shall do. The door has been left ajar exactly as required. I could hear Monsieur Ellsworth fumbling around behind his door on my last visit, and combined with his hesitation to open his door to me. I can presume he had something he did not want Detective Poirot to see. Oh. Ah. Oh. Ah. 
I guess. I should not be surprised by... Put your hands up and step away from there. Monsieur, there is no need. Enough of your phony pleasantries. Let's see what the real police have to say. The first thing they would notice is the politician aiming his revolver at an officer while they are conducting official police business. I'm sure they would agree. I have every right to protect myself from a foreign intruder. If you were to lower the gun, Perhaps we could discuss the situation we find ourselves in. You may have authority in your own country, but not here. Now, uh, explain yourself. You don't know what you're talking about. Enough! I need a second to think about all this. Uh, how has it all come to this? No, uh, it's not my fault. It, it's... It is not too late. Your intentions were good. Scotland Yard will look sympathetically at... If you had just left that fool Hardwick to it, we wouldn't be here. And I wouldn't have to do this! I have done nothing but remain honourable to my oath to uphold the law. It is Monsieur's choices and actions that have brought us to this point. And he must accept responsibility for what is to come. Moro, are you all right? All the better for seeing you, Hastings. I was worried I was going to miss him. Your timing and accuracy could not have been more parfait. Perfect. What do we do now? We take our leave. And what about him? Will he be okay? He shall be fine. Although I am not envious of the sore head he will awake to. Come. There is much to tell. Behind the bookshelf. But I never... Monsieur Dryden, how are you? Detective... Poirot. Yes, of course. What can I do for you? She is, but not here, I'm afraid. 
Do you know where she is? She said something about heading back to the museum. For what, exactly? Forgive me. I recently inherited a number of belongings from a deceased relative, including an undeveloped spool of film. I'd like to help, but there isn't anyone here that could develop them for you. I'm more than capable, and I'll leave it tidier than when we arrived. In that case, knock yourselves out. I've got a meeting to run to anyway. I shouldn't be longer than half an hour or so. Pardon. Where has this confident and daring version of Monsieur Hastings been hidden? We all have a hidden side. It's just our own choice of when to show it. So our first step is... Don't tell me there is something the great Detective Poirot doesn't know. I must concede that photography is something I have little experience in. Lucky I'm here, then. We need to start with a tray filled with developing fluid. Next, pour the fixer fluid into another tray and then add the photographic paper. I have a newfound respect for those that make such activities look so simple. Let's just wait until we see the results. It shouldn't take long. Ah. Ah. Mm hmm. Huh. Huh. Hmm. Have you found it yet? You want the photographic fixer? And how would one know it from another? It smells like ammonia. Handy, I suppose, when you can't see much in here. We've already been over this, Poirot. I don't want to argue. I have no intentions of continuing our previous conversation. What we must address now is her potential guilt. She didn't steal the painting, though. We know that. Her guilt in Mademoiselle Cotsmite's murder. Merci. Okay, I think that's everything. Oh. Is there a problem? There shouldn't be, but there must be light coming in from somewhere. Is that not the point of a dark room? That it will allow no light in to damage the photographs? 
We need to find where the light's coming in from and damaging the prints. You continue your work, and I shall find the curious light source. Monsieur Hastings, may we talk a moment? I'm in the middle of developing these. Can it wait? I'm afraid not. Mr. Poirot, you are a genius. Mr. Poirot, you are a genius. That would never have even occurred to me. I've got a lot to learn. Look, this photograph is just about finished. Is that? It appears so. And what has she got in her hand? That can't be the same cigarette case. The cigarette case that was taken from Mademoiselle Farquhar's luggage on our voyage here. It appears Mademoiselle Farquhar had a much closer relationship with Mademoiselle Cotsmythe. I would say they... Cousins. Oui, monsieur. Hastings, I must thank you. For what? Allowing myself to be enticed by Miss Farquhar's feminine nature. For saving me from whatever Monsieur Aylesworth and his revolver had planned. If it wasn't for me licking my wounds, you wouldn't have been there alone in the first place. And if you were, and not at the Cotsmide estate, we would never have made such revelations. You are one of the most honest and authentic fellows I have met. You cannot allow a misguided moment of red-blooded male instinct to taint that. You have never let yourself fall to the wicked ways of the fairer sex. No. And that is a day I cannot even fathom. With Hastings' help at the Cotsmith estate, something I would have liked to have considered, we now know the reasoning behind Mademoiselle Farquhar's brutal actions towards her own cousin. The circumstances around the murder need no further consideration. But the location of the missing Benedent Magdalene still frustrates me. A moment of peace before one's little grey cells must ponder how Mademoiselle Cotsmythe made it from the museum with the painting in tow. Ah yes, Hastings had something for me. An invitation to Mademoiselle Cotsmythe's exhibit. Even after the truths of her crimes and personal betrayal, Mademoiselle Warbeck still feels it within her for a final send-off. Perhaps Mademoiselle did not leave with the painting at all. Poirot, there you are. What are you... On this occasion there is no time for pleasantries. We shall finally bring the mystery of the missing painting to an end. We must return to the scene of the initial crime, the Royal Edward Gallery. Is everyone present? Please ask them to convene in the exhibition room. Is there something you're not telling me? All will be revealed. Monsieur et Mesdames, thank you for joining us here today. What's this all about? Yes, my time is rather valuable. I thought everyone was here to see the exhibition. I'm all for looking at some real art. As long as it's not all hers. 
I understand the frustration and hostility that most of you must feel towards her. For some, even... Hatred? Loathing? Disgust? Betty, please. Even after everything, you stand here and defend her? I'm not defending her. If anyone should hate her, it's me. Perhaps you should move on. In this room is where it all began. Or at least, that is how it appeared. We are all aware Mademoiselle Cotsmide was behind the painting's disappearance. But it was not a moment of greed that drove her. But rather a well-orchestrated plan that involved most of you tangled in her web of lies and deceit. All right, all right, we all know why we're here. Maybe you can speed it along a little. At the detective inspector's request, I shall forego the series of events that led up to the theft of the penitent Magdalene painting. Perhaps a fitting place to begin would be with the death of Mademoiselle Cort Smythe. If that's going to get things moving... You are all aware of the fire and murder that took place at Mademoiselle Cort Smythe's loft apartment. The fire that she started after having one too many. That is where the difference between desire for the truth and the actual truth go their separate ways. Inside Mademoiselle's apartment was the penitent Magdalene painting, or at least a forgery, one of four produced by her own brush. The fire was set purposely in an attempt to destroy evidence and hide the true nature of her death. Poison. I know things got out of hand, but it was you that broke into my office in the first place. There still remained one missing forgery. The image of the honorable and distinguished gentleman that you present yourself as has gone on long enough. It may seem like an alien concept to you, but we English, we take great pride in how we present ourselves. How long are we going to entertain this man's twisted fantasies? Hmm? <laughs> Poirot, can we move this along? While searching the main hall for clues, a snuff box was found full of cocaine. And after speaking with my good friend, Monsieur Demir, about the effects of cocaine on the human body, recent studies have discovered that the use of cocaine and other such stimulants can put a tremendous strain on the human body, including an increased heart rate. Oh, preposterous! I would never do that! Your heart attack became the perfect distraction while Mademoiselle Gottsmythe was able to slip into the exhibition room and remove the painting from the wall. Faking a heart attack is pretty low, even for a politician. Monsieur Hastings, once the painting had been confirmed as stolen, and Monsieur Aylesworth had bothered the detective inspector enough to show he had nothing to do with its disappearance, he would get to keep the original and claim the insurance money. He was going to have his cake and eat it too. I'm not going to stand here. And... You'll stay right where you are. A stolen painting. Timed perfectly with his crossing of the aisle in the House of Commons. All designed to raise his profile, just in time to announce his desire to be a prime ministerial candidate. I wasn't doing it for me. The poor and the needy. I wanted to give them a voice. I have never heard a more self-righteous claim for breaking the law in all my life. How am I meant to help those that really need it unless I'm in a position that can really bring about change? I have dedicated my life to serving God. I have no need to be involved in any of this. Psst. 
The pieces you had commissioned by Mademoiselle Cortsmythe, which hang on your church walls. Why are we even standing here listening to this man? Has this got anything to do with, frankly, anything? Mademoiselle Cortsmythe's forgeries would be hung on the church walls, while the originals were sold on the black market to lace your own pockets. You have no proof of these accusations. Poro, the penitent Magdalene. How could one forget? We have already discussed one of the multiple forgeries, and found amongst your hidden collection the second. Mademoiselle Cotsmythe sold you a forgery that you believed to be real, and upon learning of its fabrication, you lashed out, destroying it. One should not allow oneself the arrogance to consider themselves the smartest in the room, especially when they have already fallen foul to another's lies and deception. I am sure theft and embezzlement are questionable enough in God's eyes. I wonder how many other hidden skeletons are going to appear. I wonder how many other hidden Haven't you caused enough damage? Madame Hélène, the famous actress and performer, your story is one I learned with a heavy heart. Look here! When you overheard the conversation between your husband and Mademoiselle Cortsmythe at the gala, your suspicions were confirmed. I did everything to keep you happy, but it was never good enough. It began with an infatuation, but turned into a relationship. With the money stolen from your wife, you planned on running away together. So that's why you took it. You coward. She manipulated me from day one. She used me. She used her. Oh, just keep it shut. Perhaps for once, you should listen to your wife. This is all going to make for some story. Deals were hatched, forgeries were created, and promises were broken. Mademoiselle Cortsmythe used a mask of deception and authenticity to betray you all. She allowed for you all to see and know only what was necessary to complete your part. Except for one. As much as I'm enjoying this show, any chance we can get to who killed her? You shall have to wait only a moment longer as there was only one accomplice left, and perhaps the most important. Not only her aid in the museum, but in the construction of the forgeries. Mademoiselle Farquhar's deception began before I had even left the shores of Belgium. You were part of it, the whole time. Taking us all for fools. You know where the painting is, and who killed Irene. Mademoiselle Warbeck, do you remember the words you used when discussing your career? No, I mean, yes. You're taking it out of context. On the contrary, Mademoiselle Cortsmy threatened your career by involving you in the theft. The exact context you described. I wouldn't kill her, though. I couldn't. You cleaned the key to the restoration room, did you not? You continued to deny your involvement with the deceased. A relationship that was nothing more than misplaced love. You think I don't know that now? I knew it had been her that took the key from my pocket. But when I confronted her... Behind bars, that's where she belongs. Give it a rest, old man. She can't speak to me like that. Before you continue riding your high horse, Your Grace, perhaps one should consider one's own actions. My actions? 
How dare you? You're making a mockery of me, the church, and God himself. It is you that makes a mockery, and I am sure God will forgive me for saying so. Poirot, the penitent Magdalene. It all ends here, where it began. I know you have a flair for the dramatic, but I do have a job to do. Mademoiselle Cartsmite manipulated everyone. But that does not excuse the parts that you all have played. Poirot, the murderer. Tell us now, or I'm marching them all down the station. Of our suspects, all guilty in some form or other, only one committed the ultimate sin. Monsieur Christiansen, a lover, jilted and tossed aside from a life promised together. Mademoiselle Warbeck, Another that was promised her heart only to become a second, caught in Mademoiselle's web. Monsieur Aylesworth. Anger that a foolproof plan backfiring. Bishop Mountjoy, a third, sold the idea of an original painting, livid at the thought he had been tricked. Mademoiselle Farquhar. Trapped in a partnership where you did not receive what was owed to you. All with motive but lacking opportunity. Until the realization that someone had used a timer to set the fire. Isn't that right, Mademoiselle Farquhar? Our true relation to the deceased. Cousins, standing to inherit her entire family estate. You don't understand. It wasn't like that. You decided to poison her with potassium cyanide, a chemical often found in photography development, via the cock of a bottle of champagne. Wearing an almost identical hat to the deceased, you were able to disguise yourself as her and be seen by the neighbor. Leaving her body lifeless in her own apartment, you tried to cover your involvement in both the forgeries and the murder by destroying any evidence. Incredibly clever. Your nefarious plan setting the fire almost tricked even I. Did you really just praise her for starting a fire? On the contrary. It was the deception behind the fire. A timer was used, allowing for Mademoiselle Farquhar to be seen in her office as she slipped in and out of the darkroom window. I didn't want to kill her. But she gave me no choice. She gave you no choice? You planned and executed a brutal murder. She was your cousin. A cousin that has controlled me for years. I couldn't escape her. She held you captive? I did not see a prison cell in her apartment. No, of course she didn't. Emotionally and financially, I was her captive. I was a struggling critic, but she taught me how to stand up for myself and get what I wanted, what I deserved. You were aware of her scheme all along? Not at first. I didn't know she was selling them on the black market. But even when you did find out, you didn't stop. There was always a reason I couldn't. And what money I did get, she would hold for me. I couldn't remain under her control anymore. There was no other way. Mademoiselle, there is always another way. All I see is the student becoming the master. Detective Inspector, perhaps it is time that Mademoiselle was escorted to the police station. The truth has been revealed. 
And Mademoiselle Cotsmythe's murderer will pay the price for her crimes. There is something you're forgetting, though. If you think for a moment that the location of the original painting has slipped my mind. Go on, then. Where is it? In this very museum. If the original painting was to find its way into her portfolio, it would be returned to her after her exhibition has concluded. Meaning, it would be delivered to her on a plate. Exactement. She prepared one of her picture frames and made sure it would be in the restoration room. What on earth is he doing? You've got to be kidding me. It would take too long to remove the nails from the frame and hide it, surely? The nails were sawn down, creating the illusion of being used correctly. When, in fact, the backboard was easily accessible. Hidden perfectly behind... what Mademoiselle Kautzmai deemed to be her masterpiece. I never doubted him for a second. Monsieur et Mesdames, the penitent Magdalene. Well, Detective, you've solved both the theft and murder. I am rather impressed. Finding the murderer and solving two thefts would have been far more impressive. Two thefts? You already have another case? You have forgotten Mademoiselle Farquhar's missing cigarette case. Oh, of course. Do you think Miss Farquhar lied about it going missing after all? Perhaps it really was worth something. Mademoiselle Farquhar is far from an honest woman. Lies tripping from her tongue at every turn. But if our motive was indeed to fake theft and claim the insurance money, she would surely not have left it lying where Mademoiselle Babania claimed to have found it. Mademoiselle Babanyan's motive is now clear. How she pulled off such a cunning theft still eludes me. Something Hastings said has my little grey cells fired up. Nothing is ever quite what it seems. I suppose we are all forgeries or counterfeits in some form or other. Could Mademoiselle Babania have pulled the wool over my eyes in a similar way? I must return to the evidence from the ship with this new perspective. It is you that should be happy, mademoiselle. With no effort at all, you are able to save the day with barely a second thought. You turned a stolen heirloom with a thief and a victim into nothing more than a misplaced item. A case of being in the right place at the right time. I do not believe in coincidence. You were where you were meant to be. Had you not boarded when you did, you would likely have not been invited to the gala at all. Or been able to be within touching distance of so many beautiful and historical pieces, including the silver mantle. One thing I have learned during my time here in London is that people portray a version of themselves. One to be seen or be met, and another that remains hidden from the world. What are you trying to say, detective? That there are some that wear a mask of authenticity. That perhaps, under different circumstances, I would have had the pleasure of meeting a different Mademoiselle Babania. Will you be leaving London now? There are a few small matters to settle before I leave. Mademoiselle Farquhar is now in the hands of the Scotland Yard, where she will stand trial for her crimes. You really do believe in the law, don't you? If you do not believe in the law, madness and lunacy will ensue. And everyone should be punished for their crimes? I believe that we should be held accountable for our actions. No one man is above the law. 
or woman. And you, mademoiselle? Are you to leave London? There's nothing more for me here. I hear Paris is quite beautiful. Perchance our paths should cross again. Perhaps under those different circumstances. I look forward to it, detective. Well, that's that then. Oui, monsieur. The cases are closed and Mademoiselle Farquhar will shortly be behind bars. What of the others? Judging by the detective inspector's glare at Monsieur Ellsworth, he will not be escaping the law. And Bishop Mountjoy, once news spreads of his connection with the black market, I would question his attendance come the Sunday service. I was hoping at least someone would get a happy ending. Monsieur Hastings, you have been by my side throughout this investigation. Without you, the guilty party... parties would not be facing the consequences of their actions. I helped where I could, but it was mostly you. I know that. What you may not know, and I would kindly request you keep to yourself, is that I consider myself somewhat of a... Uh, loner. I would not go as far as that. But it appears you understand my sentiment. Good thing I was around to save you from a gunman. I fear I shall not live that down. I'll maybe hold on to it uh, a little longer. Not many can say they've saved the great Detective Poirot. The great Detective Poirot? As much as I admire your formality, I think we should look for something more familiar, accustomed to our new relationship. Our new relationship? I have seen the benefit of friendship. Connecting with someone that can be trusted and loyal. Someone that shares an authenticity not only in themselves, but in their beliefs. And that's me. Detective Poirot and his trusted friend, Arthur Hastings. It does have a certain charm to it, n'est-ce pas? 